eight o'clock as the clock says so I'm gonna set off now and walk through the station to the ferry port as I'm on my way to Dublin today so this is my first ever look at going on a ferry now the thing is it's quite windy here in Hollyhead today and um, I get very seasick so more than ever we really are going to see how this one goes that clock was built by JB Joyce and placed here to honor the harbour extension from 1878 there's been a station at Hollyhead since 1848 but this one was constructed by the London and North Western Railway in 1866 and I'm very pleased to see that the Grade 2 listed train shed is currently under restoration. Have a look in the top left for the beautiful fern motif. In the platform now is a Class 175 three-car unit. This will form the 0805 service for Cardiff Central, which will take just over five hours to complete its North Wales to South Wales journey. Beyond the brick wall to our right is Platform 3, the railway station handles just over 200,000 passengers a year, which is dwarfed by the 2 million passengers a year handled at the ferry port. Foot passengers from the town can now access the station from the west over the Celtic Gateway Bridge, which was built in 2006. It's also by use of this bridge that passengers can make it to the distant Platform 1 on the other side of the water. Right, it's cold and windy out here, so let's get ourselves to the terminal. There's a ticket machine here by the doors and it does look like they're putting some new signage up which should probably be quite welcome. And as we can see the station and the ferry terminal are very closely integrated. As we enter the concourse ahead of us are desks for Stena Line and Irish Ferries who operate competing services from this port. And to the right is the staffed rail ticket office. There's also a car rental desk which will open at 8.30 and some refreshment vending machines too. The eastern entrance provides access for bus passengers and people being dropped off by car. All in all a fairly bright and pleasant concourse area. So while we're waiting in the concourse let's have a look at our route for today. Well our Stena line is going to take us from Hollyhead in Anglesey in North Wales across the Irish Sea to Dublin Port. A distance of about 109 kilometres and were scheduled to take 3 hours and 15 minutes. And it's not long before we're called forward through check-in and security and I find myself in what they call a passenger lounge. And now we jump on a Stena bus and join the ferry. The bus drops us off at the car deck and then it's up the stairs to the passenger accommodation. There are lifts available for less able passengers. As you can see there's very few cars on the deck today. And here we are on the Stena Estrid. It really is not a very nice morning out there. The main passenger accommodation is split across decks 7 and 8, so let's pop up to 8 and see what it has to offer. Well, this looks like a nice place to sit myself down. Well, boarding was a breeze. Interesting, I didn't get asked for any ID. And uh, here we are, in the lounge. And uh, yeah, 30 minutes before we're supposed to set off. Just going to chill out for a minute and then um, maybe you and I should go up on deck. Well, I'm slightly scared because it's really cold and windy and wet. But hey, should we both brave it together? And yes, it was both cold and windy, but it was nice to get a bit of fresh air before we uh, cast off. Cast off? Is that what we Out do? Out the front is the taste restaurant on deck seven. There's a few people enjoying breakfast, but uh, yes, there's certainly some spare seats. But I've no need for breakfast this morning because I had a wonderful breakfast at my bed and breakfast, Applebee's in 
Hollyhead, and I'd certainly give that a 10 out of 10. Well, this little spot will do very nicely, thank you. And we depart on time. So whilst we're pulling away from Hollyhead, a bit about the ship. Well, the Stena Estrid sounds and looks very Scandinavian, but was actually built by the ABIC shipyard of China and delivered in November 2019. It weighs in at just under 42,000 tonnes and can accommodate 1,000 passengers, 120 cars and 210 freight vehicles. Although I suspect it's nowhere near that capacity this morning. And as we pass the final breakwater, I do start to wonder if things are about to get rough. But no! There's no difference at all. The stabilizers on these modern ships are really good. There's nothing for it now but just to chill out and kick back with one of my favorite podcasts. This sure is a lovely place to sit and enjoy the view, even though there isn't much of one today. Right, before we get to Dublin, let's have a closer look at this Stena Estrid. Up here on deck eight is where there's the obligatory games area and then we come through to the Sky Bar. And as the name suggests, it has a very airy feel with the natural light of the atrium. So let's pop down for a little bit of a mooch round deck seven. So this is where guest services and the coffee bar are located and straight ahead is access to the car decks. But as I'm feeling brave, let's go through these heavy doors leading back out onto the promenade deck. We weren't that far from Dublin, so the duty fee shop had already closed. So I thought I'd head out to the restaurant at the front of the ship to see if I could get a good view of us coming into Dublin. And indeed I did get a great seat at the front ready for the approach to Dublin, except we weren't going to be approaching just yet. The captain informed us that we were going to be held outside the port for 20 minutes whilst a container ship cleared the approaches. But soon we were making our way towards Dublin port. What a treat it was to sit and watch Dublin ports slowly come into view, even on such a grey day. So, with reference to price, my economy single from Holyhead to Dublin cost me £32, and I paid an additional £3 for the coach transfer from the ferry terminal into Dublin Connolly. And I think for a journey of 3 hours and 50 minutes across the Irish Sea, that comes out as a pretty reasonable deal. And then foot passengers were called through to meet at the customer service desk and it was time to disembark. And we went back down the way we came to the awaiting buses. And once off the Stena bus, we passed through the gates and then boarded the transfer bus for Dublin Connolly. And that's when it all got a little weird as we seemed to get set off and then we spent 20 minutes parked up at the side of the road. But eventually we did reach Connolly station and I got myself onto the tram for Houston station. I won't be staying in Dublin tonight as I have onward travel to Galway. The tram was very quick and effective, costing me one euro seventy, as I recall. Well, that's it. We got off the ferry and got the bus, then changed for the Luas, and I'm here at Houston. That was a great ferry ride. Really quiet and comfortable, and really nothing to report. It was just perfect. Uh, it was a very strange bus transfer as the driver didn't seem to actually know the way out of the ferry pulled over and wandered off to ask people but didn't say anything to the people on the bus so we just sat there for 20 minutes 
wondering if we've been abandoned. Anyway, here I am at Houston, and um, yeah, I'm I'm travelling on to Galway, which will be the subject of yet another video. So do like and subscribe, and we'll see that one later. Cheers then. I release travel videos every week, so if you've enjoyed this one, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye from Dublin Houston Station.